Good morning, St. Luke's, and welcome to our worship service this morning. This will be recorded for March 29th. I thought that I would start outside the building so that you can uh, just see what's going on here. It's a beautiful spring day. I'm actually recording this on Friday. And uh, since Mary was off today, she is playing some music for us as we go into the sanctuary. as it should be. So welcome to our worship service this morning. Well, good morning, St. Luke's, and we are sheltering in place. And this is March 29th. And as you can see, I came over to the sanctuary to do this uh, service for us this morning. It's not our usual service because um, no one's here. I'm the only one who's here. Mary's helping me out a little bit with music. Other than that, it's an empty sanctuary. I am very much looking forward to when we can all gather here again. We don't know when it will be, uh, and for however long it takes, we don't know, but we do know that we will be back in this place again, and we're very much looking forward to that. So I'd like to start the service with uh, a reading. There's only going to be one reading. It's actually from the Gospel of John, chapter 11. I sent you a copy of this yesterday. And it's a long passage, and we can't cover the entire 45 verses. I'm going to highlight a couple of things from this passage that are highly, highly relevant to our situation today as the world is in this crisis at this time. So here's the gospel. The gospel of John, chapter 11, verse one. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother, Lazarus, was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jewish leaders were just now trying to stone you, and you're going to go there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of the world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. And after saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death. But they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. And Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. And when Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to here to come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. And when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. And while Mary stayed at home, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. 
Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. And when she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. And the Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. And they followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. And when Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him and she knelt at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit, deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to the Lord, Lord, there is already a stench because he's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And so they took away the stone. And as Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he said this, he cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and his feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him, let him go. And many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary, had seen what Jesus did and believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. So this is a story about, it's a narrative about love and loss and grief. It's an account of Jesus as he, as he helps, pe he helps the people he loves gain more insight into death and life and chaos and suffering. Remember that Lazarus and Mary and Martha were his closest friends. So when he wasn't with his disciples teaching, he would often go to their house and be with them. So St. Account is going to use this to help Mary and Martha and further on down the road, us understand, give us some insight into death and life and chaos and suffering and feeling out of control. All of these energies are, are in this particular narrative, in this account of the raising up of Lazarus. Highly, highly relevant for today. Now, it is the kind of Bible reading that you might be tempted to skip over if you were to read this at home. Because, like most of the scripture, the wisdom found within these texts It, need to, it needs to be considered over time. You need to learn how to dwell on it and meditate on it and consider it deeply and wonder about it and wrestle with it before it often releases its life-giving power. So I want to encourage you, since we are drawing closer to Holy Week, next week is Palm Sunday, I want to encourage you to read this particular text every day. Because what you will, you'll find that as you read it every day, more and more truth will come to the surface for you. It will bubble to the surface. I can only give you some of it today because we only have a limited amount of time. But as you read this yourself, you're going to find that there's all sorts of encouragements in this passage 
that you maybe have never noticed before because you maybe never took the time before. So here's the account, very, very briefly. I'm just going to highlight a couple things. Again, Lazarus, Jesus' good friend, got sick. Now, the name Lazarus means God helps. That's what his name means. It means God helps. So Lazarus gets sick and he lived in a town called Bethany. Bethany means the house of affliction. So right at the start of this narrative, John, the writer, is telling us, the reader, this is a story about how God helps people when people are afflicted. It's like, oh, really? Yeah. This is, a, this is a narrative about how God helps people when people are afflicted. The house of affliction. Now, that affliction can mean anything, everything that the world struggles with, with fear, with despair, with loneliness, with sickness, with griefs, with pandemics, the whole thing, the house of affliction, it's all covered. So John tells us that, verse 3, that Lazarus, Mary, Martha, send word to Jesus that his beloved friend is sick, and Jesus waits two days before he leaves for Bethany, before he leaves for the house of affliction, two whole days. That's unusual. There appears to be no rush on Jesus' part when he hears about his beloved friend's sickness. He says to his disciples, this, this sickness will not end in death, no, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it, verse 4. So John tells us that Jesus waits for two days before leaving for Bethany, and by the time he arrives, Lazarus has been dead four days. So it's like four days, it's beyond help at this point, right? It's hopeless, it's lost, it's, everyone's grieving, They're, they've had the funeral. That's what the point of this delay time is and all of this waiting around. And when Jesus does arrive at Bethany, Lazarus' sister, Martha, said, if you had been here, verse 21, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. If you had been here. So it's like it's too late. I mean, she's got to be wondering, why didn't you come sooner? Why didn't you come and help us? What What is... Why, where were you when we needed you? It's that kind of thing. And Jesus said, 23, your brother will rise again. I am the resurrection and the life. And she replies, yes, I know that he will rise again on the last day. So she's saying, this would be similar to what we would believe. She's saying, yes, I believe that after we die that life continues on for us and uh, she has a sense that uh, death isn't the end, that uh, similar to what we believe, that we believe that death isn't the end for us, that life will continue on in some way. We're not exactly sure what it will all look like, but we trust that we'll be with God and all will be well. This is Martha's understanding. Now listen to what Jesus says to her, because he wants to steer her to a more immediate sense of God's activity. And this is where this text is incredibly powerful so again she says yeah I know that he'll rise again and Jesus says to her I am the resurrection and the life he goes to Lazarus grave with Mary and Martha he demands that the stone be the stone that sealed the door of the cave be removed Martha ob objects since he's been dead four days. The stone is removed. Jesus prays and then calls out in this loud voice, verse 43, Lazarus, come out. And he staggers out and Jesus says, take off the grave cloths, let him go, or unbind him. Now, by the way, this is the last healing Jesus does before he goes to his own death on the cross. This is the last sign in John. 
Now, it seems like it's easy for us to assume, as Martha did, that yes, God is alive, and yes, God is real, and yes, God is powerful, but for all practical purposes, this power is, I don't know, for some time in the future, uh, maybe for the next life, when things make sense. But by raising up Lazarus, Jesus is showing Martha, and he's showing Mary, and he's showing the disciples, he's showing all the followers down throughout the millennium. He's saying, Martha, God's power let loose in the world isn't something in the way distant future. That's not, that's not what I mean when I say, I am resurrection. It's for now, he's saying, it's for today. It's for whatever house of affliction we find ourselves in. Now, Lazarus, after this event, lived out his days, and he died, of course. So did Mary, so did Martha, so did all the disciples. So it's certainly not a count, it's not an account that's saying there's no death. We know this already, this isn't new to us. What he's saying is, and the, one of the truths in this is, is that you don't have to wait for the end. He's saying, I am right now, resurrection and life. Right now, today, at this moment in time. Jesus is saying, whatever suffering you have, whatever trials you go through, whatever trials you're going through as we shelter in place, as the world shelters in place, whatever grief, whatever loss, whatever hopelessness, he's saying there's no situation, there's no crisis, there's no sickness, there's no pandemic, there is nothing greater than the one who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Now, granted, we don't know what new life will emerge from all of this. We don't know how the story will play out, but we know the one who knows how to work in chaos and distress, right? I think it's important to note that Jesus waited two days before leaving to see Mary and Martha. And the old word is tarried, the Lord tarried. It's, it's an important spiritual lesson for a time like this, this whole idea of waiting, this whole idea of the Lord tarried, waiting for something to change. So very painful for us to wait for something to change how we resist this place of waiting. You know, why is nothing changing? How long will this last? What's going to happen in the future? We have all these questions when we're waiting for something to change and we're praying for help and we're praying for wisdom and we're praying for courage and discouragement can set in in the small hours of the morning. And Lazarus' healing reminds us Jesus didn't drop everything and rush off to heal Lazarus. He waited and the waiting was purposeful. God seems to use waiting time. God seems to use waiting time. It's, you know, for everything there's a season. And, and for many of us, all of us, this is going to include a season of waiting. We're definitely in a season of waiting just now a season of trusting God. And while we wait, of course, we're doing all the necessary things. While we wait, of course, we're protecting ourselves, we're protecting our loved ones, we're taking all the precautions while we wait. While we wait, we are, we're reaching out to our elders, we're reaching out to the vulnerable, we're working, some of us, we're praying, we're waiting. Signs of new life we will see now at this time. 
we're going to experience this resurrection power in our own homes. We're already experiencing it. We just have to pay attention to it. Remember Jesus' words, I am the resurrection and life. It's like whatever people act in love rather than fear, that's resurrection power. A kind gesture, whatever a kind gesture takes place, that's resurrection power. Whatever people walk by faith and not by sight, that's resurrection power. Every act of courage that people take is resurrection power. Every act of service, that's what resurrection power looks like. Every act of caring, every act of loving in the midst of chaos, that's what resurrection power looks like. Yeah, I said last week, you know, faith is doable. It's something that we can do. We often think that it's, you know, huge things that we have to accomplish. But I think in times like these, uh, faith looks like doing the best we can and trusting and learning how to love one another. So I want to encourage you with that this morning, that whole idea that resurrection power is something that we will experience on a daily basis many times. Every time we are turning to God, that's the Holy Spirit in us helping us and guiding us. So let us, let's take a moment and we'll ask God to um, help us to remember that God is with us, God is helping us, God's strength is with, with us every moment of every day. We have this resurrection power in us. Amen. Well, I thought we could sing this song together. It's called Just Say. Just say the word, just say the word, I'll be there. 
Exactly. And there's a couple ways we can do this. You can either mail it in to us, of course, but if you would prefer, you can also use Paybill. So either way is fine. We're happy to take your offerings. Polly and Jerry will continue to go and bank our offerings every week. And um, so let me encourage you to either mail that in or use Paybill. Now, I'm going to do, going to close with some prayers, but before I close with these prayers, since this is a, a more public setting and we're putting this on YouTube, uh, these prayers are more general than usual so that I can protect the privacy of, of individuals. However, please know that I hold you all as individuals in my personal prayers. So I'm going to pray and I'm going to have a little bit of uh, space in between each prayer. This is, these are prayers for the world and what we're going through just now. And um, so I would invite you to pray for the church and the world and ourselves. Let us pray. For the sick and infected, God help and heal, sustain bodies and spirits. For our vulnerable, vulnerable populations, protect our elderly and those suffering from chronic disease, provide for the poor. For the young and strong, God, give them the necessary caution to keep them from unwittingly spreading the disease, inspire them to help. For our local, state, and federal governments, God, give our elected officials as they allocate the necessary resources for combating this pandemic, help them to provide more tests. For our scientific community, leading the charge to understand the disease and communicate its gravity, give them knowledge and wisdom for the media committed to providing us up-to-date information. Help them to communicate without causing panic. For those with mental health issues and challenges who feel isolated, anxious and helpless, provide them every necessary support. For the homeless, for international travelers stuck in foreign countries, for missionaries throughout the world, especially in areas with high rates of infection, provide them with words of hope and equip them to love and serve those around them. For workers in a variety of industries facing layoffs and financial hardship, God, keep them from panic and inspire your church to generously support them. For families with young children at home, help mothers and fathers to partner together creatively. For parents who cannot stay home from work but must find care for their children, God present them with creative solutions. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Amen. And peace be with you all. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.